The dragon? You can't put a bench up with your mother's name on it and call her the dragon. Can you? I knew some of you were going to ask. Um, I knew some of you were going to be kind of, really? Why? All right, so there's a bit of a story to this. Um, so some of you will be interested in this, some of you will already disappeared, but my mother was very fondly known as the dragon, and it's all my fault. Uh, so this goes back to when I was a little boy, um, I don't know how old, all I know, I was a little boy and um, when we were young, growing up on the farm next door, Dad was milking 72 cows. Um, the, the farm was, um, I wouldn't say th it was thriving, we were kind of struggling. Mother had three small kids and it was a struggle sometimes to put food on the table. But we always had a Sunday roast, every week. She made sure that at least Sunday, we had a full roast dinner. And it was, my mother's dinners were legendary. Legendary. Um, but the thing is, whatever we had for Sunday dinner, whatever was left over was made into soup. And for, I won't say for the rest of the week, because that's not true. I mean, we didn't eat badly. For a fairly low income household, we ate quite well, but, my mother made the very best of what she had. And quite often to make stuff, stuff stretch a bit further, she makes soup. And every week, every week, we had quite a few meals of soup. Well, those of you of my age from the UK may or may not remember a children's TV program called The Clangers. And for those of you that do know that, you've already guessed the rest of the story. Now I'm gonna try and find a clip of the clangers on YouTube or somewhere and see if I can cut it into this video. Of all the stars and moons and planets that shine in the sky, by far the most troublesome is surely this one. This small cloud-covered planet is our Earth the home of the human race. That small clangor. He's heard something. So Tiny Clanger runs off to the soup wells to find the soup dragon and ask her for some soup for their visitor, who is hungry. Um, for those of you that don't know, now the clangers were aliens, um, knitted aliens. They were literally knitted puppets on a planet far, far away that used to make, make things out of space junk. It was a bit like an uh, alien version of the Wombles almost. And their diet was soup. And the soup was made by a green four-legged dragon, okay, known as the soup dragon. So whenever the clangers were hungry, they'd take their little trolley down to the soup dragon's kitchen and get some, I think it was green, the soup. I can't remember. Um, I'll remember when I look at the clip. 
So, um, because we had soup nearly all the time, I started calling my mother the soup dragon. And she didn't mind, because literally that's what she was doing. I mean, her, and I was saying her soup was bad, it was soup was good, she'd make broth, she'd make runny, no, not, no, not really runny soups, thick soups, you know, stuff that you had to um, properly consume. You didn't drink it, you had to eat it with a bit of crusty bread and butter. Anyway, so, Soup Dragon kind of stuck for quite a while, and we kept calling her Soup Dragon, but um, after a period, the soup bit got dropped, and she simply became the dragon. Um, to the point where she was known throughout the town and locality as the dragon. And that wasn't vindictively or nastily, or, oh my God, don't go near her, she's a dragon, or, you know, she wasn't a, a Karen or anything. Ah, sorry, Karens, those of you that aren't, but, you know, <clears throat> she was very fond of the dragon. In fact, we used to even get our, um, I say we, she used to get posts from the bank when it was um, Midland Bank then in those days, um, addressed to the dragon. I kid you not, I kid you not. So posts from the, from the bank and other people quite often and Christmas cards and birthday cards and all that sort of stuff was regularly posted to the dragon. Now, um, the farm didn't do very well uh, when I was a little boy and my mother was actually earning more in the farmhouse doing bed and breakfast than dad was with 72 cows. So the time came when father made a decision that he would give up farming and turn uh, about eight acres of our farm into a touring caravan site. The rest of the farm was rented out to another uh, young farmer I might cross that bridge as well because I actually worked for him as much as I did for Dad. And we had a touring caravan site. And on the touring caravan site, Mother was known as the Dragon. To the point that we even, we would get touring caravans come in. And to save her legs, Dad bought her a little moped. One of these little tiny velocipede things, we used to call it. Uh, which is a little moped. It had pedals on it so you could pedal it and it had an engine. Some of you know what I mean. <clears throat> and I can remember us making a cardboard dragon's tail and dragon's head for this moped. And she would ride around the campsite on this thing, keeping an eye on her estate and everything, what was going on, and showing people where their pitch was, stuff like that, with this bloody moped with a dragon on it, which was okay in the summer months. But when it got a bit later in the year, um, and it was getting dark, she couldn't see where she was going because the light didn't work because of this living dragon. But anybody who lives locally, any, any uh, uh, folks of you that live in Wooden or the surrounding area will remember the dragon. And that is why her name on the bench, Jean Mary Pullen, which was her name, uh, she was a Worrell before Pullen, um, that's why I have put in brackets the dragon because that's how she was known. And like I say, it wasn't as an insult. It was literally, um, they loved her. They loved her. I mean, nobody messed with her. She was a formidable woman. You know, if, um, if you upset the dragon, yeah, no, don't do that. That would be a really, really bad idea. So, and again, some of you who knew her will know exactly what I'm talking about, but I have very, very fond memories of my mum. Um, I had great pleasure in, um, uh, paying or not, not supplying that bench to the Jersey Town Council and putting it in the place where she grew up. So Little, which is the shop it's in front of now, when my mother was a little girl, that was the Dursley Cinema House. In fact, that was the cinema where I think I saw Bambi and Jungle Book again when I was a little boy. Um, so it was still a cinema when I was around and then it got shut down because movies, TV came along and killed the cinema temporarily. It shut down, got turned into a quick save, and then into something else, and now it's now it's a little. But my mother would have spent a lot of time up there, and she would definitely have been in that area as a, as a young girl. So um, I spoke to my dad yesterday and said, could I interview him? And I think what we're going to do is, oh, are you, are you nesting? Where are you building a nest? got a robin sat on the mirror up here with a beak full of nesting material. Where are you now? You better not be in those beds.
And you better not be building it on my tracks either. Oh, I don't like the look of that. There's a hole in the cab of the tractor. I've got a really nasty feeling. Oh, you can't build a nest in there. Anyway, I'm going to come back to this. Um, so basically, I'm going to have a chat with my dad, interview him, and um, we're going to talk about his very early days on the farm, when he took the farm on from my grandfather, and my mum. So basically, I'm going to do a video. It's really and truly for the family, for us. And depending on how that... Um, He's back. I bet he goes in there. I'm going to have to chuck him out of there. You can't stay in there because the tractor's not going to be here in a week or two. Oh. See, I, as far as I'm aware, if I block that all up now, I'm breaking the law. But I can't let him build a nest in there. He's literally, looks like he's just started. I'm going to have to stuff something in there. To stop him going in. Oh no, I can't ask him. So, I'm really sorry to all your ornithologists, but I can't afford for the tractor to be sat here for weeks and weeks and weeks doing nothing. I can't do it. So, oh, what am I going to put in there? I mean, it's a lovely place for a nest, but it can happen. Right, I'm gonna stuff a rag or something in there and uh, fill that void up. What about that one at the back and the other one there? Oh. See, we used to have an issue with uh, oh, the pied wagtail every bloody year. She would come and build a nest on the top of the gearbox back there. And the thing is, what can you do? I mean, once there's chicks in there, what, what can you do? You know, you can't go driving around the fields for all day because she wants to sell the nest. All right, they'll be warm enough for a while or they'll be cooked. <sighs> Don't get me wrong, I love the little birds. I've got no problem with Mr. Robin building a nest. In fact, I'll even put a box in here for him. But he can't go in there. Just watch the little devil jump in there. Now he can jump straight back out again. You're not allowed in there because you won't just eat your poo in there, will you? Go on, get out. Get out of it. Tinker. Right. So that side's almost done. Chips in, straws in, just got to spread the straw. This could do with a bit of a refresh. So I'll finish that, let this lot in there, refresh this side, and then that's done. Did I tell you it was Saturday the 18th of March? I don't think I did. Morning world. Welcome to Saturday 18th of March. It was about three, four weeks ago. Holly rang me up and she said, Dad, some man's just run in and um, left you a fork. And I said, pardon? She said, some, some man, she says, I said, who? She goes, I don't know. This man came in and it was, um, what was it she said? He said, oh, it's be nice to somebody day or something. So I've left your dad this. And it's been another, it gets warrior for a week. I keep forgetting to take it down. And he left that, this fork, brand new fork. Still got the rubber bits in the end and left it here. So, Whoever you are, thank you very much indeed. That's very, very kind of you. I'm assuming you were thinking of replacing my two-pronged pitchfork. But you know what? It might have two extra prongs, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm, I'm very grateful. So, yeah, so apologies. If you've been waiting for me to say thank you, sorry, because I walk past this thing up to two times a day and I keep forgetting to pick it up and bring it down. But today I've remembered. So, yeah. Thank you.
yummy. Wheat straw, how delicious. That's it, go on, dig it up and crap on it. You know you want to. It's bound to happen, wouldn't it? Right, pop it, you. Go on. Do the inside first, we'll come back and do the outside later. Go on, in you go. Anyone down there? No. Go on, you little tyke. Go on. No, don't go in there, you little devil. Go on. And you, go on. That's our latest baby. Go on. Look at the face on it, it's just bloody mischief that is. Go on. Right, I can enjoy the new bed in there for 10 minutes. And I'll do this one in here. Anyway, I think I finished explaining my mother's pseudonym nickname earlier. I think I did. Um, but just to remind you that it was a name given to her out of love, not out of uh, anything else. And she was very, very fond of it. Um, and I miss her a lot. Uh, although I will say I miss her from five years ago and beyond because the last two years of her life, actually I'll go either way, the last two years of her life were pretty miserable. Um, it wasn't a life, it was an existence. She had very little joy last two years of life, so when she, when she finally passed, and I was there with her when she passed, and so was my oldest daughter. We sat there and held her hand and talked to her when she, when she left us. It was a very sad day, but also there was an overwhelming sense of relief for her because that was not an existence that I would have wanted. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to keep all the very fond memories of her. Some of the sad ones I'll never get rid of because they're etched into my head, but yeah, I still remember the day in the front yard, front yard of Cannon Court and we had some hard rubber balls, those really hard rubber balls that, you know, you check over here, they bounce. And I can remember us, we were out in the front yard playing catch and, uh, I was by the front wall facing the house and she said, oh, no, 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 no. She said, said, no, I'll swap places with you. You're going to put the ball straight for the blinking window, aren't you? Right, OK. And what did she do? The very first throw, she did, it was a dark blue solid rubber ball. The very first throw she threw for us kids straight through the office window. Oh, we laughed about that. Father wasn't overly impressed, but we did laugh about that. After all that lesson of, no, oh, no, you know, you know, can't trust you kids. So I'll, I'll throw it towards the house, and you throw it away from the house, and she's straight through the office window. It's little things like that, isn't it, that you remember. Right, this doesn't get the job done. Mrs. P will be here in two hours. I need to crack on, so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get on and do this, finish my jobs. Um, I think. Dave said he might come down and see me later on this afternoon or early evening. I think we might be having supper down here. And if I get time, I'm going to replace Mr. Robin's nest. I'm going to make him a new one. And if I can, I'll make a couple. So I think we've got some old wellies in the house somewhere. And that's what we'll do. They make fantastic bird nest wellies. Um, and I'll show you how when I've finished all this and Mrs. P's gone back. Right, okay. Ooh. Right, it's just started to drizzle with rain again. Oh, no, it stopped again. Okay, well, that's good news. I just give a, oh no, it is. It's that fine, misty stuff. I don't even know if the camera's gonna pick it up. I can see it against the dark, shaded area of the barn. Well, anyway, so 
they've got a clean bed in here clean bed both sides actually um, I was going to do the yard the other side but I think I'll wait till that um, big black cloud has gone so it's just a great machine but it's not much fun outside when it's pitting down rain so uh, yeah a cup of coffee um, maybe see if we can sort out some old wellies for a couple of bird bird nest sites and then we'll come back down and uh, muck out the yard later Well, it wasn't as bad. I thought that was going to be a lot harder than that. Uh, mind you, I did dig a fair bit out. Okay, you can come back in at that shitty yard now. But you have to move. Move. Go on. Go on. In you go. Do you know what? Any war. All right, it's actually quite a lot of rain. Yeah, a lot of rain. Oh, bugger. I just went over the water and can rose. I didn't want to do that. that drain get rid of it I don't want it going in the shed Ugh. I think it's slowing down I gotta change these jeans anyway taking it as well. I just had to take the bung out though because um, the water was coming down so fast that the train couldn't cope so I've had to take the overflow bung out. Now it's taking it away quite happily. So yeah surprising how much water a yard can collect and bear in mind a lot of this is going underground even before it gets here. Right okay that blue sky now. Okay, you lot, you can come back out. There you go. I'll give them all a bail later on. So, Sunday tomorrow, so I'll be going to Oxford. So in a lot of ways, if I can make that last for another few hours, I'll put a bail in there. I know that'll last until I get back tomorrow afternoon. Here we go. The bull has spotted the ladies. Some of them smell quite interesting, I think. They won't be long and you can go and play with them. Literally. That one's doing his job all right.
that one's doing his job. And it looks like that one there is doing his job too. A lot of people judge me on this, saying, oh, the water won't go down there, you won't get rid of the water, it's too high, and blah, 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 but there you go, there, there it is. Bye-bye water.